Welcome back to Telltale, guys. My name is Emily. I'm Greg. And today we are talking about The Preserving Machine by Philip K. Dick. More in our yes. Philip K. Dick series. More Dick. More <laughs> Dick. More <laughs> Dick. Anyway. But we're still just doing little dicks. Just the little dicks. More little dicks, though. Yeah, it is a, it is a short story, and it's actually part of a series. It's called the Dr. Rupert Lab Labyrinth series. Oh, and I didn't the other, know that. The other story, there's only one other story in it. It was written in 1960s, so we won't get there for a long time. Oh. It's called The Short Happy Life of the Brown Oxford. <laughs> yeah, well, at least it was happy. Yeah. So, <laughs> this story was published in Fantasy and Science Fiction magazine in June of 1953. We finally get out of May. June! <laughs> We're into Behold. June of 1953. Still in 53, though. Yeah. We will be forever. And this is like the 18th story by Philip K. Dick we've read yep. in this series. And uh, synopsis. Synopsis is... <laughs> the world is starting to crumble. And there has been a lot to indicate this. And... A gentleman sits there and thinks, what's going to happen to all the beautiful things of civilization? Like, usually, when survivalism starts, the first thing to go is the arts. More mm -hmm. specifically, music. So, he decides, he wants to find a way to preserve music so that other generations can experience it in a way that just revitalizes it within them, within their nature. And so he goes to, was it like University of Ohio or something? Can't remember. One of the, like a Midwest university okay. and says, hey, I have a proposal for a machine that preserves these things and gives them information and they start doing the research and they're successful and send him his machine after mm -hmm. they finished it. And so what he does is he then f feeds in different music, popular music, like Beethoven's Ninth, um, mm -hmm. Mozart, mm -hmm. Schubert, you know, that kind of stuff. And he feeds it into the machine, and it turns it into an animal. Yeah. And each of these animals is weird and quirky and kind of reminiscent of what we would see in our lives, but not really. And then he goes and he sets them free in the woods behind his house. But mm -hmm. over time, these animals get real quiet and he can sense something has changed mm -hmm. but he's nervous and doesn't want to go by himself so he has a friend visiting him nondescript no name just kind of the person who's narrating is there visiting him and says let's go in the woods and take a look so they start wandering through the woods and finding that animals are dead some have changed a lot of them are much more aggressive than they used to be have um, come up with weapons and defense systems. And so he realizes it's not the same music anymore. Mm -mm. So he takes one and feeds it back into the machine, one of the more harmless ones that he could handle, and finds that the music that's come out of it has become completely distorted and it's horrific and awful. And it's not even music anymore. Right. So he has failed in that he has not been able to actually preserve the true beauty and nature of these musical pieces in these animal forms because the animal forms have had to adapt to an environment that is hostile mm -hmm. and have ironically had to become survivalists themselves mm -hmm. just as much as humans would have to become survivalists in the downfall. Yep. And that's kind of how it ends. Just yeah. this conclusion of, guess I gotta kill these now. <laughs> Spoiler alert. But, I mean, he does, because now they're dangerous. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's the story. And uh, I love the story. I don't think it's a great story, but just that idea. Mm -hmm. It's a very original idea. Of you feed sheet music into a machine, it and it sense. comes out as an animal. <laughs> yes. It, that's just so whacked out. It is really whacked out. I did kind of have a similar situation, though, where I was really overthinking this one and becoming very critical of it. Okay. It wasn't... It was a fun original idea, but mm -hmm. you did have to lean on plausible deniability a lot, for one. Yeah. Well, 
It's of a course. fantasy story. Yeah, it's not science course. fiction. But I'm trying to figure out how he expected these animals to become music again. Unless this, con- you know, preserving machine ended up being mass marketed, which it didn't sound like it would be. So I'm trying to figure out what he expected the outcome of this to be, ultimately. Like, how were people supposed to get music back Mm -hmm. when it wasn't being now? It does bring up an issue with digital recording Mm -hmm. and digital sciences. The fact that when, when CDs first came out, people thought it was possible that these things would never degrade. CDs degrade. Mm -hmm. They do go bad and, you know, they... They get scratched up. They get worn out just like vinyl. (laughs) the plastic gets scratched, but you can can, um, polish the scratches Mm -hmm. out. But the disc inside will degrade over Mm -hmm. time. We didn't know that when they first started making CDs. We thought they would all... They're encased in plastic. They're never going to go bad. Um, That's not true. And so... and. Same with a lot of times. Have you ever had a computer file, a Word file or something that Corrupted. you've worked with for a long time and then all of a sudden you go to save it and you're disconnected from the server or something and you go to open the file again and you can't because the file has become truncated. It's become corrupted. It, you know, um, storing information... The information can change over time. It can become corrupted. It can degrade over time Mm -hmm. on our digital devices because our digital devices are not purely digital. They do have a physical side to them. We are storing Mm -hmm. on disks or chips or Mm -hmm. whatever, and those those do have a physical side to them, so they can um, degrade over time. Yes. I think the unique thing about this, though, is like, any living thing changes over time as it learns new things. Mm-hmm. What he was getting was not a pure essence of something when it became no. alive. It was supposed... It adapts to it environments. Its goal is to survive, which is fine, but it's not going to be the same. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not the same person I even was five minutes ago. Mm-hmm. Because I've since learned new things and had new discussions and seen different perspectives through our conversations or information that I'm absorbing through whatever I'm listening to on the radio or what you know whatever podcast I'm listening to, I've mm-hmm. absorbed new information and that has changed me as as a person, and changing my views or starting a transition to change my views or you know re-solidifying old views i don't know right you never know so it's one of those things where it's like how did he if he's a man of science how did he not know (laughs) and i that's the criticism i had was how did he not know it would change when it became a living being and also how the f did he expect people to be able to convert it back to music to get music back Mm -hmm. but i feel like too one of the other criticisms i had of this was Music has actually been such an ingrained part of culture for storytelling that I doubt it would go first. People would just make a new kind of music. Well, yeah. Exactly. So it's like, yeah, of course, Bach and Beethoven were important, but maybe by that point they have become obsolete and new music has to exist because Mm -hmm. humanity's changed. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of those like overthinking criticisms of it. When I relaxed and kind of stepped back from it and just read the story and stopped the criticisms, it was actually quite a fun and really interesting and very yeah. original story. And but I kept delving into it so much being like, mm, There's a lot more to fact. think about on this idea, though. Like, yes. What happens when you feed a night in Bald Mountain into this machine? Yeah, seriously, out? what does that become? <laughs> or Sorcerer's Apprentice? Yeah, <laughs> like you start dealing with or some of the darker works. Uh, o for, Fortuna in there is probably... The Rite of Spring? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, like some of these more sinister sounds. Mm-hmm. Like, what does it become? Or modern music, like Serge Ligeti. Yeah. yeah. What, what does Cher's animal sound <laughs> <laughs> what does Owl City's animals sound like? Let's talk about Queen for a minute. Black what Sabbath. Is, yeah. What is Metallica's animal? Yeah. 
what's what's Marilyn Manson's animal? Probably Satan, honestly. <laughs> Like, yeah. you never know. So, yeah, there was a lot. There's a, there is a lot to unpack and a lot mm-hmm. to, like, wonder about. But I like the story because it makes me think that way. Mm-hmm. And I did like the originality of it, for sure. Yep. But I would have to say this isn't... It's his most original story so far, I think. I don't agree. <laughs> yeah? What do you think is? I would like to know. Um, we've Well, we've had an... You know, obviously, yes, he did repeat his, he did repeat certain themes over and over, but with a lot of originality, and mm-hmm. and I like those better. Okay. Um, I'm forgetting the names of the stories. Let me That's let okay. me consult my memory. Let us consult the scrolls. <laughs> also known as the Telltale website. Yep. Um, the Defenders, mm-hmm. Second Variety, Imposter. I mean, all those. Kind of have the mm-hmm. same theme, and so I get where you would say maybe they're not so original because he's just he doing is the repeating same thing himself over. a lot, and that but, is kind of what I mean by it. Yeah. It is one of the. But I just think it those feels were more like one of them. Stories. Yes, I think they are definitely more powerful. This feels like the most pulled out, most pulled out of his ass story is probably a yeah, better way to describe weird. it. It, it is, is definitely weird, weird. In that it yes, that's probably a more accurate way of saying it than just saying like, oh, it's and it's an a, more it's, original. You know, everybody has been making comments how he was hopped up on drugs during this time. Maybe he was. So. And yeah, this seems the most drug fueled of anything yeah. we've read yet. My whole thing is too is like so. If you get good radio, so. yeah. If he's making money, <laughs> yeah, he's laughing business. all the way to his drug-filled vein bank. <laughs> like, okay. So we have a flashing battery. Do you have anything else to say, quick, before the camera dies? I really don't. Those okay. were my criticisms. I don't either. I, yeah, it, it's still a good. It's story. a good story. Go read it. But yeah. it's not top tail. That's all I gotta say. Thanks, guys. Like, subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.